up guys welcome back to another video in today's video we have something super special for you guys that's been over six months in the making today we are going to be showing you guys how we built our very own diy one wheel so without further ado let's get into the video these are the rails that we are using for our diy one wheel build and they come from the old float wheel kit float wheel currently sells a pint version of their own diy one wheel but in the past they used to sell this one. These rails are CNC'd from aluminum and they're super high quality and they make the DIY one wheel look almost exactly like a real one. This is the hub motor that we are using for our DIY one wheel and as you can see it actually looks quite a bit like the real thing. We got this thing from PayPay Pay Scooter. I would highly not recommend this company. Not only did this motor actually ship faulty, the tire won't stay inflated for over 24 hours, but it also took us two months to receive it and we contacted PayPay Pay Scooter about the fact that the tire won't stay inflated and they haven't helped us whatsoever. They have pretty terrible customer service, so I would just recommend finding one elsewhere for your DIY one wheel build. Overall, it gets the job done. It has these weird Molex connectors and also these other weird phase wire motor connectors, which we did end up replacing later on in the build. We soldered on our own four millimeter bullet connectors and took off that Molex connector for the sensor wire and replaced it with a standard six pin that you'll see on most Fesks. The first step of the build is to install the anti-spin plates, which go inside one of the ends of the rails and then align with that center piece that goes into the axle of the hub motor. This essentially just prevents your hub motor from damaging that thin piece of metal that is holding it in place and just provides a little extra strength. There's then a small screw that holds the anti-spin plate in place. The next step is to feed all of those wires that go into the motor through the side of the railing so that they will eventually go into the ESC compartment. You just have to bunch them pretty much in there and it's a really tough process of squeezing all of them through but eventually they just went all the way in there and around one side bending back into the other side. At this point you can align one of the rails up with the motor and then insert it on. The axle of the motor will be the exact same cutout shape of that on the rail as the rail has been cut precision CNC to match that exact shape. There's then this torus shaped nut which screws onto the axle and holds the rail to the motor. At this point we had rail number one of two installed and we just repeated the exact same process to the other side to install the second rail. The next part that we have are these two 3D printed caps which will go on the ends of the rails and act as the bumpers of the one wheel. They actually did not include these with the kit that they sent us, so they actually instead sent us the STL files and then we just sent those to a 3D printing services as we don't have a 3D printer and then we got them made for us. We set them to the highest print settings that way they'd come out with the best quality and be the most durable and so far they've held up alright. The installation process for these is pretty simple, all we had to do was just slide them right into place inside the sides of the rail. To further secure the bumpers to the rails, there's actually some wood screws which they include and you can just screw these into the corresponding holes on the one wheel rails and it should hold those bumpers nicely in place so that they don't come loose. The next thing that we have are these aluminum plates which act as the bottom of the one wheel and essentially these just get screwed on to the bottom side of those rails and they'll protect all of the electronics from any debris that fly up. We also have these 3D printed compartment dividers which we once again had to get printed at a 3D printing service. These dividers are held to the one wheel plates by some screws. There's also a handle that's included that mounts into one of these bottom metal plates so that you can hold the one wheel while walking. The next thing that we did was to mount the two metal plates to the bottom side of the rails using the screws that were provided. There are six holes on each side, three on one side of the rail, three on the other side of the rail to mount each plate into the rail. Now that both metal plates on the bottom are installed, we have two compartments. One is going to be the rear and that's going to hold the battery and then the front one will hold all of the electronics. So this right here is the MPU that we used in our first DIY one wheel build. 
since we finished this build, we actually don't use these anymore as there are plenty of VESCs out there that already have a built-in IMU. But this one is an MPU6050 that we got from Amazon and we hooked it up externally to our ESC, which was an absolute pain. We also have these foot pads right here, which were included as part of the kit. And unfortunately, they have a VESC6 pin and we we're using a VESC4. So what we had to do was to clip off that connector and then resolder a 6 pin instead of a 7 pin JST on so that it would fit into our UART port on the VESC that we're using. The VESC that we are using is an old Inertion Fox Box single, which they don't make anymore and needed an external IMU. But if you're going to be building a DIY one wheel in the future, make sure that you're using a VESC with an internal IMU as it makes the process so much easier and you won't have to do any of these wirings that I'm about to show you. Just get either the Balance Pro from Float Wheel or a Trampo VESC, those both have built-in IMUs. The first thing that we did was to simply hook up the motor to the Fox Box. This is just done by connecting the three phase wires and then the sensor wire port. At this point, we also connected in the UART port into the FOC box, and we'll show you guys the wiring of exactly how we did that because it places the foot pad sensor in parallel with the MPU, and the wiring can get a little bit hairy and quite complex. The ESC is held into place using some double-sided tape, and the MPU is also held to the top of the FOC box using some more double-sided tape. And here we have the schematic for wiring the MPU and the foot pads into the VESC. I'm not really going to explain it because there is absolutely no need to ever do this again. This is just kind of to show what we did. Again, just to reiterate the point, do not use an external MPU. It led to a lot of problems later down the road. We had the MPU that just kept drifting and we couldn't get the one wheel to work for a while. And we only ever got it consistently working when we actually used a VESC with a built-in IMU. So this is just the diagram that we used, but I would just recommend getting a VESC with an internal IMU. To control the board, we're going to be using a power switch, which we have from Flipsky. The one that we have actually comes with the actual power switch from Flipsky. However, the kit actually included its own button. So what we did was we rewired the Flipsky switch so that it allowed the use of this external button. That way it would fit exactly into the frame included already with this kit. It was at this point that we realized that we would need to have a wire harness that would transport the voltage from the battery across into the other compartment. So we soldered up this extremely long cable with a connector on the side for the battery and then one on the other side that would go into the switch and then the ESC. However, when we tried to thread it through the rails, we realized that it actually wouldn't fit. So we had to disassemble one of the sides to thread that wire through and then we were able to continue back on the build. On the electronic side, the harness first plugs into the power switches inside and then the outside of the power switch goes into the fog box. We then reconnected all of the phase wires back into the motor from the ESC. The next part was mounting the charge port into the rail. It is a standard 2.1mm DC jack that will work with most of our other Eastgate chargers that we have. It has a hole already pre-drilled in the aluminum rail that fits perfectly to size but it also has to have an extremely long cable harness to go all the way through that side rail and back to the rear battery compartment. And we didn't realize this, so we didn't actually film it, but we actually had to take apart that rail again and then slide it all the way through the rail into the back compartment. We then doused all of the washers with a bit of hot glue to keep them more watertight and also to keep them from spinning or coming loose on rough trails. To sum up the front electronics enclosure, we first have the foot pad, which has four wires that are connected into the UART port along with those from the IMU. These both connect together and then go into a single connector which goes into the UART. The VESC is plugged into a power switch which goes to a battery harness in the rear enclosure. There's also a charge port that does the same thing and then the VESC is also plugged into the motor through the phase wires. Moving into the battery, the battery that we have for the DIY one wheel is a 12S2P custom pack that we got made specifically for the one wheel by Chai Battery Systems. The 12S2P 40T pack can output up to 70 amps which is going to produce a lot of power. The 12S voltage gives us a high top speed and it's 345 watt hour capacity means that the one wheel has a lot of range. It comes with an XT90 for discharge and then an XT30 which will connect into our charge port. Overall I could not be more happy with the pack and if you're looking for a custom battery pack for any kind of build I would definitely recommend either Chai Battery Systems or this guy called Eastgate Alex on Instagram. Both have excellent packs. The installation here is quite simple, you just pop that battery back into the rear compartment and it should fit just perfectly. 
we secured ours down with some sticky double-sided tape. The battery's XT90 then goes into that extra long harness, and then the battery's XT30 charge port then goes into the XT30 charge port harness. To make sure that everything's fitted properly, we tried charging the one wheel by plugging it into that charge port up front, and sure enough the red light turned on and the pack in the rear of the one wheel is charging. At this point, the rear enclosure on the DIY one wheel is done and we can seal it up. However, when we went to do this, we realized that the battery pack was actually a little bit too thick for those aluminum rails. So what we did was we designed a 3D printed spacer in CAD, sent it to our 3D printing service, and then got this back around two weeks later. We then inserted this spacer on top of the aluminum rails and under that wooden foot pad. And now that compartment is now thick enough for the battery which means that we can use a bigger pack than is intended for. And then of course we also put one of these on the front side. The rear is then sealed up using four of the screws included. Okay, so the last thing to do before closing up the electronics compartment is to program the BESC. And I'm just gonna go quickly through the settings that I have. This video honestly deserves one of its own because this part took us more time than actually doing the physical build. It's just that complicated. So you're obviously gonna wanna auto connect. Right now we're using the version 2.06 tool. This is not the most recent way on how to program your VESC using the Balance app, but this is the one that we used for this build. So when you set up the motors, I'm not gonna actually do it because we've already programmed it and everything, but we selected this e-bike DD hub motor six kilogram and we ran the detection as normal. Next, for our app setting, we have it set to balance and then these are the rest of our settings here. As you can see, these are the settings that we have in the balance tab. These are the exact same settings that Floatwheel used it on their original DIY one wheel kit. So we just copied that pretty much as well as use some Freedom Collars adjustments. And then in the IMU tab, this is what we have set. You'll want to toggle all of these on when you're actually programming them. Right now we're moving the one wheel and as you can see, it's moving up and down, up and down. There's a ton of videos on how to do it, but these are just the settings that we have set. And if you guys want, we'll make a whole video on how to actually program this. For now, we are just gonna show you the settings that we had. And now with the VESC tool all programmed up in the balance app set, we closed up the front electronics enclosure using four screws. For a finishing touch, we added some of these one wheels fangs from the website Landsurf so that in the event that we nosedive, we'll have a little bit of extra time to get off the board safely and not completely fall off. We also added the Shred Lights flat sticky mounts for use of any SL200s or SL1000s on the side of our one wheel so that we can ride this board at night. Not only does this make your DIY one wheel or one wheel a lot safer by letting you see the road, but it also lets oncoming traffic see you. They're an absolute necessity for us, so we stuck two on the front and two on the back for two headlights and two taillights, and they make a world's difference when riding at night. So there you guys have it. That's how we built our first DIY electric one wheel. This was honestly such a fun and challenging project and we've been working on it and continually upgrading it over the past six months that we've had it. We're also currently working on our new video for the new float wheel kit, which resembles more of a one wheel pint. So that's gonna be coming in the future soon here. But going back to this one wheel, I just wanna say that this is nowhere near a perfect one wheel. There are still so many flaws and so many improvements to be made. As of right now, these are our current specs on the first DIY electric one wheel. The top speed is around 17 miles an hour, but we start getting some tilt back right around 16 miles an hour depending on what the voltage is. The range is around 10 miles on hilly terrain. I imagine you could probably squeeze 12 or 13 out if you're riding on flat ground and very slowly. 
As for hill climbing, this is not the best hill climber in the world. Those fangs on the front that offers protection don't really help us out on those hills and they limit the maximum tilt angle. We found that we can get up hills at maximum around 20%. Now I'm sure the number one question is going to be how is the smoothness of the DIY one wheel compared to an actual one wheel and to be honest I can't really tell you guys the truth on that because I've only ever ridden an actual one wheel for around 5 minutes over the course of my entire life but I can say from those 5 minutes that the actual one wheel is definitely smoother than this DIY one. There's a clicking sound that the motor makes when it switches directions and also it can be quite jerky at times. Overall though, considering that this is a DIY one wheel, I'm super impressed with how it came out. I was not expecting the responsiveness and the ride feeling to be as good as it was. I was expecting it to be super jerky and almost unrideable. However, with no one wheeling experience in my history, I was able to learn how to one wheel on this DIY board. And I've also had some friends try it and be able to pick it up in less than 5 minutes. So that goes to show that it is actually a feasible one wheel and it actually works with decent quality, although it's never going to be as smooth as the actual one wheel. Stopping on this one wheel works exactly like the authentic one wheel. There are two sensor plates and when you take your heel off of one of the sides, it'll disengage and the one wheel will stop balancing and you can gently get off of it and I think this is really cool that they've managed to build this feature into this DIY one wheel. Another thing that I'd like to touch on is nose diving, which is something that occurs on regular one wheels and also occurs on our DIY one wheel. If you ride too fast and reach that maximum speed limit, you will have a nosedive, which will throw you off the board. This is one of the reasons we put those fangs on there. It actually happened to us on the DIY. It happens from time to time if your foot comes off the pressure pad and it's a real problem and leaves us a little bit on edge when riding the DIY one wheel. Overall, I'm so happy with how the DIY electric one wheel came out. It's been the past six months that we've been working on this one wheel, trying to make it as reliable as possible. And this video is the culmination of all of the steps that we've taken to try to make it as good as possible and make an understandable tutorial for you guys. So thank you guys so much for being patient about this video. We know it's been a while. Also, we're currently working on the newest float wheel kit, which resembles more of a one wheel pint. So that video is gonna be out in the future. If you've enjoyed the video and you've made it this far, please consider liking it. It helps us out so much. And also comment down below what you think of our DIY one wheel and any future improvements that you have for it. Also, if you're not already subscribed, please consider subscribing to our channel. It helps us out so much in continuing to create videos like this. I just wanna say thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you guys in the next video.